Hey Alexa, are you ready to do some accounting? Sorry, I don't know that. What? <laughs> Alright, let's do this. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel where we discuss professional development, the CPA life sound, everything in between. If that sounds awesome to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and welcome to the accounting channel. I started a series on this channel where I teach you guys the basics and fundamentals of accounting. In the first episode, we went through the accounting equation. If you haven't had a chance to watch the first video, make sure to go watch that now. I will have the first video linked right here. Now that we understand how to record debits and credits, let's illustrate the transactions that we encountered with our company CPA Swag, but this time we're going to use T accounts. Before we dive into T accounts, let's first define what a T account is and why it's so useful. Now follow along here because this short three step roadmap will show you exactly how business transactions impact the accounting system of a company and how every single transaction is recorded and stored within an account balance. First, we have the general ledger, which is commonly referred to in practice as the GL. The general ledger is a bookkeeping ledger in which accounting data is posted into various accounts via journal entries. A journal entry is used to record a business transaction in the accounting records of a business. Every time a business transaction occurs, a journal entry is used to record and store the financial impact in at least two places. This is known as the holy grail, double entry accounting. Now that we know what a general ledger is and how different accounts are impacted via journal entries, the first two steps of our roadmap were defining the general ledger and how it's impacted via journal entries. But now let's get into T accounts. A T account is simply a graphic representation of a general ledger. It is called a T account because the journal entries are laid out in a way that resemble a T shape. The account title appears just above the T. And just like we learned in the accounting equation video, the debits are on the left represented with a DR and the credits are on the right represented with a CR. I always say that if you can remember that debits are on the left and credits are on the right, you're halfway to a CPA. In double entry bookkeeping, all financial transactions are considered to affect at least two separate accounts. When you are evaluating a set of business transactions, T accounts are extremely useful. T accounts help you visualize how two separate accounts are impacted with every single business transaction. T accounts will also help you determine the ending balance of any general ledger account at the end of a business transaction. From our accounting equation video, we had four separate business transactions that impacted our company, CPA Swag. If you haven't watched my debits and credits video, make sure to pause the video now and watch the debits and credits video to make sure you follow along and you can understand how and why I debit and credit certain accounts. Now, instead of illustrating the CPA Swag business transactions using the accounting equation, let's use T accounts. To fund the initial operations of CPA Swag, we deposit $1,000 in the company's bank account. This transaction would be reflected in T accounts as follows. Cash would increase by 1,000 because we put 1,000 in the company's bank account. Cash is an asset account and has a normal debit balance. To increase cash, we would debit cash by 1,000. Equity would also increase by 1,000 because this is the ownership in the company after deducting all liabilities. And since we just started the company, we have no liabilities. Paid in capital is an equity account. Equity accounts have a normal credit balance. To increase the paid in capital account, we would credit this account. From this business transaction, we impacted two separate accounts, cash and paid in capital. Using T accounts, we now have a visual representation of each account that was impacted and the ending balance of each account. We now have 1,000 of cash and 1,000 of paid in capital. We now want to buy t-shirts for the company, which is going to be our inventory that we will sell to customers, which are going to be purchased from a supplier on credit. In order to make this transaction happen, we purchase inventory from a supplier for 500 on credit. As inventory is an asset account, it has a normal debit balance. We will need to debit inventory in our T account in order to increase the inventory balance. As we purchase the inventory on credit from a supplier, we will also need to increase our liabilities via accounts payable. As accounts payable is a liability account and liability accounts have a normal credit balance, we will need to credit the accounts payable T account in order to increase accounts payable. So far, we have 1,000 cash, inventory of 500, accounts payable of 500, and paid in capital of 1,000. We did a great job marketing the t-shirts and we sold all the inventory we purchased for $800. There are four separate accounts that are impacted by the sale of inventory. Inventory, cost of goods sold, accounts receivable, and sales. Let's go through each account and see how it's impacted. To record the sale of inventory we have on hand, we will reduce inventory by $500. 
As inventory is an asset account, to decrease inventory, we will credit the inventory T account. As the inventory we purchased had an original cost of 500, we will also need to record the cost of goods sold of 500. Expense accounts have a normal debit balance. In order to increase cost of goods sold, we will debit the cost of goods sold T account for $500. Remember, we sold the inventory on credit to customers for $800. We will now increase assets via accounts receivable by $800. Accounts receivable is an asset account, which means it has a normal debit balance. To increase accounts receivable, we will debit the accounts receivable T account. We will also need to increase the sales account for the sale of the t-shirts. Sales or revenue accounts have a normal credit balance. In order to increase sales, we credit the sales T account. Now, let's look at our T accounts to verify the balances. We now have cash of 1,000, Accounts receivable of 800, accounts payable of 500, cost of goods sold of 500, sales of 800, and paid in capital of 1000. Now that we experienced a little success with the business so far, we now want to start making our t-shirts internally. So we go buy a printing machine for the business for $300 with cash. There are two separate assets that will be impacted in this transaction as they are both stuff that we own. Cash will go down by 300, but the equipment in the business will go up by 300. To decrease cash, we credit the cash T account. To increase equipment, we will debit the equipment T account by 300. To show you guys how this all works, we'll use the accounting equation to illustrate the balances that we have. On the left hand side of the accounting equation, we have cash of 700, AR of 800, and PP&E of 300 for total assets of 1800. On the right hand side of the accounting equation, we have accounts payable of 500 and paid in capital of 1000. Remember, we have 800 in sales and 500 of cost of goods sold. The difference between sales and cost of goods sold is the gross profit of a business. The sales of a company less the expenses is the total profit of a business that will roll up into equity or retain earnings. We now plug in the 300 of retained earnings in our accounting equation. The total assets of the company equal the total liabilities plus equity. We have successfully completed the accounting equation using T accounts. To recap this video, remember that T accounts are a graphic representation of a general ledger account. T accounts can be very useful in keeping track of account balances when analyzing business transactions. Remember that debits on the left with a DR and credits on the right with a CR. The key to determining when to debit or credit a T account is knowing the normal balance of each account and then determining if the business transaction is increasing or decreasing the account balance. Assets, expenses, and dividends have a normal debit balance, which increase when debited and decrease when credited. Liability, equity, and revenue accounts have a normal credit balance, which increase when credited and decrease when debited. That's going to be it for the video today. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit the like button below. And also, don't forget to share this video with any of your accounting friends that might be struggling with T accounts. And until next time, work hard, dress well, peace.